Hello students, Professor Dijin here. In this video, we are going to discuss the variances of the OLS estimators. When thinking about the variances, we want to answer the question, how far can we expect a one hat to be away from beta 1 on average? Likewise, how far can we expect beta naught hat to be away from beta naught on average? To simplify the analysis, we are going to add to our list of assumptions a strong and, in many cases, unreasonable assumption, um, which is homoscedasticity. Homoscedasticity is the result that the variance of u given x is constant over the domain of x. So the spread of the error over the domain of x is constant. Now this is a relatively unreasonable assumption for many scenarios in economics, but making this assumption does simplify the analysis. Um, recall, if you think about what homoscedasticity means, if you have a variable x and perhaps a variable y, and maybe the observation look like this, and your regression line is like that. Okay, so the spread is constant over the domain of x. This is in contrast to heteroscedasticity, which is the result that the variance of u given x is not constant. Okay, so it is some function of x. And that might look something like this, where as x gets larger, what you have is that the spread of the observations gets becomes wider, all right? And having this result is, is more common than having a constant, um, a constant variance of the dynamics. But we're going to make this assumption because it simplifies our analysis. Now also observe that the variance of u given x, this is the expected value of u squared given x minus the square of the expected value of u given x. This comes from the definition of variance. And the expected value of u given x is 0. So this is equal to the expected value of u squared given x. And we have defined the variance of u given x as constant, which is equal to sigma squared. Now from the result of the covariance between u and x being 0, this is equal to the expected value of u squared, which is equal to sigma squared. So this is equal to the unconditional variance of u. So sigma squared is the error variance of the, the population regression function, and sigma is the error standard deviation. Now let's define in terms of sample, in terms of the sample, how we can estimate Let's see what we're going to do. Let's define the variances of the all the centimeters. And then we're going to talk about how to use a sample to come up with them. Right. So the variance of beta 1 hat is equal to sigma squared over the sum for my equals 1 to n of xi minus x bar squared. And that's just equal to sigma squared over SSTX. Now the variance of beta naught hat, this is equal to sigma squared times 1 over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi squared all over the sum i equals 1 to n of xi minus x bar squared. Two really important observations. The larger is the error variance, the larger is going to be the variance of the estimated. And that makes sense, right? Because the, the poorer the model with the larger variance, a uh, larger error variance, 
the more, the farther apart you may expect the slope to be from its population, its true population value. The larger the SSTX, so the larger the variance of X, the smaller will be the variance and available hat. And this result, you can see this as uh, if you have a larger den denominator, the smaller will be the ratio. And this makes sense if you think about if you have more information on X, so more variance on X means more information on X, then there's more information with which to estimate the model, and you can expect that your OLS estimator will be on average closer to the population regression function. Let's just show this last point in the plot. If you have two plots, x, x, y, y, and I'm going to plot 10 values. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Assume that they both represent the same population regression function. Which do you think is going to give us a better estimate? It's going to be contestant number 2. Right. There's more information on X with which to op estimate that population using this sample of data. Okay, so let's prove let's prove this function up here, this equation up here, that the variance is equal to sigma squared over some total sum of squares of X. The proof starts with our expression of beta 1 hat. So beta 1 hat we'll call is equal to beta 1 plus 1 over SST of X times the sum from I equals 1 to N of DI times UI. This is the result of beta 1 being a constant and xi are assumed non-random, right? Fixed and repeated samples. We also have that the ui are independent random variables. Let's write this down. This is a, a new sort of thing we're bringing into the mix. UI are independent random variables. So the variance cross on it. So the variance is the sum of the variances. Okay, so X are fixed and repeated samples. So the beta 1 and the x are not random variables. The only random variables that we have are ui. The ui are independent random variables across i. So the variance is the sum of the variances across the ui. Hence, we can write variance of beta 1 hat is equal to 1 over sst of x squared times the variance sum from i equals 1 to n di ui and this di is a fixed this represents the function of x which is fixed in repeated sample so we can take it outside of the variance outside of that expected value so this is equal to 1 over SSTX squared times the sum from I equals 1 to N DI squared times the variance of the EUR. So we've 
use the result that the x are fixed in repeated examples, and we're summing over the variances of the ui because the ui are independent random variables across the i. Now what is the variance of ui? That's sigma squared. We are now using the result that um, the ui are, the variance of ui is, the unconditional variance of ui is sigma squared. So this is equal to 1 over SST x squared times the sum from i equals 1 to n di squared times sigma squared. And what is di squared? That's xi minus x bar squared, which is the total sum of squares of x. So you have 1 over SST of x squared times SST of x times sigma squared, which is equal to sigma squared over SST of x, which is what we wanted to do. I think, but a point. And again, the larger the error variance, the larger the variance of the one hat, the larger the variance in x, the smaller the variance in the one hat. Alright, how can we estimate the error variance? Let's use a sample of data to estimate sigma squared. We are going to estimate the error variance. So we're using a sample of data to estimate sigma squared. I mean, to be careful with the terms, because the again the error the UI is never observed. The disturbance or the residual UI hat is predicted using data. Our unbiased estimator takes into account the degrees of freedom. So the predicted error variance is equal to 1 over n minus 2. n minus 2, we're accounting for the degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom for estimating two parameters, beta naught and beta 1, times the sum from i equals 1 to n of ui hat squared, which is equal to u, the sum from i equals 1 to n of ui hat squared. This is the residual sum of squares, right? So that's x, s, r, all over n minus 2. So this is how we can use a sample of data to estimate the error variance. And then we can plug sigma squared hat into the formula for the variances of beta 1 hat, the variance of beta naught hat, to get uh, the estimates of the variances of the OLS estimates for unbiased estimates of the variances. We also want the standard error of the regression. The standard error of the regression. And this thing is going to be sigma hat, which is equal to the square root of sigma hat squared. Okay, this is the standard error of the regression. And finally, the standard error of the OLS estimate, standard error of the beta 1 hat, this is equal to sigma hat over the square root of total sum of squares of x, which is equal to sigma hat over the square root of the sum from i plus 1 to n of xi minus x bar. All right, and keep in mind that the standard errors, all of these are standard errors, these are random variables, okay? Because we're using a random sample of data, random sample, right, to estimate a population parameter. So each time that we use, that, that we randomly sample from the population, we're probably going to get a different estimate of the standard error. Great! Thanks all.